everybody. I'm very pleased to be here in Boston, and uh, I am with Pada. Hello, Pada. Thank you for this interview. Pada is an AI consultant. She's from India, from Delhi, and it's very interesting to hear what she say about AI and the impact about job here in the US. I let you introduce yourself. Hi, so my name is Jagya Bhagat. I uh, just completed my master's MBA program from Harvard Business School a couple of months ago and now I work as an AI consultant with HBS uh, trying to develop a digital learning platform for uh, entrepreneurs all over the world. So um, to your question on the impact of AI on jobs, um, I think if you think about all the economies on the planet, you want to look at something called AI exposure. So because the US market is largely agrarian and services, you can make the argument that agriculture as an industry is not super exposed to AI, but the services industry is. Uh, and I think that's kind of where the risk lies. Um, but based on like, the discussion that we were having just right now with you, um, it is unclear what profits will come from these AI technologies, $600 billion of investment have gone in. Um, and I think therefore right now, I don't see it displacing any jobs per se. Uh, it's, and it's a technology that will augment and help humans do what we do a little bit better. Um, and I think at the end of it, with the proliferation of all of these AI tools that are no code or uh, open source, that are free essentially, if everyone has access to them, the differentiation will then again be the human beings in the organization. So I think the nature of jobs can change, uh, the skill level that you need to have may go up, but I think net new jobs will be created. A couple of studies by McKinsey will also speak to that. Very interesting. I have a little question because we are Indian, we are in America. What do you think is the mindset of people from India and from America about AI? Because it's, uh, it seems to be very positive for Indian people. And uh, in your work, for example, many people ask questions and doubt and they don't know if it's a danger or not. And here in the state, what is the mindset of people in the state and in India? So I'd say that Chat GPT is talked to the user countries are actually in the US followed by India. So I think it goes to show that there is a reasonable amount of acceptance for uh, these tools. Macro indicators like internet penetration, 4G, 5G, uh, smartphone penetration all show that India as a country is very well equipped to adopt some of these technologies. Having said that, I think the nature of businesses in India is slightly more, let's say, manufacturing and agriculture focused. So this is a relatively small part of the GDP stack. Um, and therefore, there is a distrust that comes uh, with bots, right? So how can ChatGPT really tell me what to do? Some of which is very real because the context that ChatGPT has is a little bit genetic and they miss some of the local niches. Having said that, it's a very young country, like 50% of our population is under the age of 25. Uh, all of these guys have a smartphone. So I think optimistic in general, but uh, I would say AI exposure in India is a little bit lower than the US. And here in the US, how the workers and the people feel about AI and the impact of a job? I think it's mostly been quite positive, just going by the room that we were in. Uh, it seems like 80% of the room raised their hands when the question, how many of you have used ChatGPT for an hour in the last 10 days? And I think 80% of the room said yes. So I think there's a lot of excitement. There is curiosity. There is some amount of apprehension, but like that happened in 1999 when like the internet became huge as well, right? Um, but I think it's mostly optimism. Yeah. Thank you so much. So the last question is about the tools that you use. Uh, what kind of tools, uh, unless ChatGPT, do you use in your daily life? I use Notion. Notion. Uh, I also use Dex. Dex, which I. Discontinue, like depending on you know um, how generous I feel, I guess. Yeah. Uh, in the month, but these are the main ones in addition to ChatGPT. I have found that Grammarly's yes. premium version was something that I 
periodically subscribed to. So when I was writing my business school applications, I took the Cambridge premium subscription because it helped me do a sentiment analysis on my essays, helped me figure out the tone, am I sounding funny, am I sounding overconfident, am I sounding underconfident. Um, and I think for different use cases, I take tools at different points in time. But steady state, for a long period of time, I would say just uh, ChatGPT, Claude, no. uh, Dex, and Thank you so much for this interview. It's very interesting to see here. For an AI young consulting woman, it's very interesting to work with ChatGPT, with Notion, with Grammarly, with, uh, you say DEC, I don't know, DEC, DEC, DEC. What is called DEC? It's called, it's called personal uh, contacts. Ah, so personal contacts. Basically, I have 400, 100 WhatsApp chats, and it's very difficult for me to manage so much information coming into my daily life. So it's essentially just a CRM tool that puts all of your connections in one place and helps you just make like the process of keeping in touch a little bit more systematic. So we are going to try. And the difference between India, very young population, very optimistic, and here in the state, people are confident with AI. So we we need to learn a lot of from these two countries to understand better opportunities for Europe. Thanks a lot. Thank you.